alaikum welcome back alaikum salam are we good to go now can start now right i hope everybody is back hope so yes sir right so from shangrila now we have to move on bismillah So actually, uh, a curriculum map uh, can be thought of. Uh, I mean, we have to know, na, after all this uh, hardship, that where we are leading to. So what actually it does? Uh, what does it do actually? It it uh, it's a road map. Curriculum map is a road map of a curriculum. So uh, and what does it do? It guides its users. And who are its users? Its users uh, are and can be. students faculty members teachers curriculum planners uh, curriculum evaluators um, coordinators um, and how how is it done how how they are being guided they are being guided through curriculum maps various elements so uh, actually uh, for students learners and others you can say it it helps by acting as a discussion starter to promote dialogue about the program's vision and mission so unless you are not involved in uh, curriculum mapping you might not have uh, get that uh, particular chance that where you can get you know get into a serious dialogue uh, within your uh, within your community of teachers about uh, what are the programs what are your institutions vision what are your institutions missions are so this is like a starter point and it also serves as a planning tool that now you start to plan something so first you have to have plan then you have to have a tool so it works and serves as a planning tool to identify the connections between curriculum components while you are getting this tool to utilize uh, for identification of connections at the same time you are being aware of where uh, where actually the components have lost their connection as well and at the same time it it also ensures that all program standards are developed within the program so whichever standards program has set for the students for faculty the all programs are are developed so you get to uh, you get get an assurance you get a, a confirmation that with your program your course your institution has uh, at, at at a very uh, early level has just you know anticipated and now you are reaching to the those particular standards it also helps you identify paths the ways that learner can follow to to get to the graduation requirements and also at the same time it provides an overview of all of your curriculum for all uh, what do you call it for a total program for uh, you know your your main mbbs bds program and then if you have sub programs um, leading to mbbs and and bds courses as well now uh you know if you are you are to start if you you want to become part of curriculum manage curriculum mapping team or curriculum mapping um, uh, pursuit first you should uh, know that are you ready or or so how do you know that are you ready or not so for that question you have to just you know uh, check at your school at your college at your institute that has uh, has the institution embarked Uh, have uh, have have started have inclined on a curriculum mapping process yet or not then what are the goals for your mapping process if you are going to start your mapping what goals you have set what goals are you setting what are goals you, you want to pursue challenges yes you you have to know you have to anticipate at the beginning probably there might not be much challenges for you as uh, for other institutes but again you have to enlist them as anticipated challenges or um, you know later on um, there might arise some more challenges as well but at least you should have some basic line up uh, for the challenges you you have to make it there that you you anticipate so it's basically f- uh, for your help to not uh, to let you get shocked while you are at the process and for solution yes so what solution have you developed so what 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 is your idea where would you look for and to whom would you look for 
if you come across some challenge that you have not anticipated earlier but has arisen later on so how how you are going how are you going to deal with that particular challenge and also how did you train evaluate and involve your faculty so have you uh, already started some basic uh, you know faculty development courses some presentations seminars workshops and you know discussion meetings among your faculty who would be later on involved in this process or uh, how are you assessing your mapping projects once the project would reach to its uh, completion or in between at different levels so how, how how you are you are thinking to assess so what would be your you know gauge what would be your uh, parameters that you look for while you will be uh, you know um, uh, looking your project from like you know a very strict uh, uh, quality check uh, lens so uh, we can see on left there 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 are some some uh, 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 I think one, two, three, four, six, nine, ten. These pointers has to be <clears throat> on your tips while whenever you are preparing a curriculum map. Because a curriculum map, while you are involved in, in developing it, would require from you to assess your needs. The first step in preparing a curriculum map is undoubtedly is to investigate the potential users of the map, the learners, I mean, their needs, and potential users could be. Um, others other than the student as well like you know curriculum planners teachers examiners administrators accrediting bodies and academic researchers as well then the scope the task the task of preparing a curriculum may may seem overwhelming right the rewards of delivering such a map however are, are, are high and potential benefits are both compelling and uh, tantalizing so later on you would know that whichever effort you have put in and in the struggle you have done it uh, are leading to you leading you to get to to, to some higher level of uh, you know the satisfaction the accomplishment the achievements and all these things would come in your way and which, which later on uh, let you get this impression that it was really worth uh, working on it so later on you have to after once you have done the scoping of the task then you have to establish the link between various elements and constituents like what comes first, what follows, what what stage you will do is at the beginning and how, how you are to just, you know, keep all the stages intact. Then you have to designate responsibilities among your colleagues, among your teams. Uh, and these responsibilities are uh, not without accountability. Anybody can say, okay, I'm responsible for that particular task. I'm responsible for that particular segment of the work. Uh, while uh, mapping the curriculum, but they they have to be, you know, um, what do you call this, informed uh, that this responsibility is with accountability. So whatever is the result, they have to just, you know, take responsibility for what they have done, either positive or negative. So, and then you have to decide the format. Format of the map is very important, actually. You know, um, there are some very simple maps and uh, I, I must say that with the exception of those simplest maps, the use of uh, paper-based uh, maps is too limiting now, very much limited. That now nowadays you won't much see these uh, uh, curriculum maps on papers only. Their usage is very limited actually. And with the, you know, um, uh, coming into play this all technology and online resources and free tools available, free templates available, so everybody is looking for for all these things. Initially, it, it, it gives the impression that these um, are not very user friendly. These templates and forms and resources. But once you just start spending some time with them, then later you know that the uh, the time you spend in learning those uh, things to get mastery are really giving you some some you know optimal results uh, in very little time. And you can see the ready made or ready available, uh, readily developed. Uh, computing systems and, and all these software have given the concept of curriculum mapping a, a new impetus. So nowadays advances in software have helped us uh, to get a digital presentation of the entire medical curriculum. So whatever format is chosen, whatever format is selected by you, it is essential that the, that particular map is presented in a way that it's user friendly. You should not take anything fancy and start just working on it. No. Something you should know that it, it's user friendly 
probably you are expert in the field you are uh, um, uh, related with uh, health profession education or medical allied subject at the same time you are computer uh, efficient person uh, but your team might not be as much as proficient in using computers and all these things so you have to just look for their uh, level of understanding and level of uh, abilities to deal with computers as well so later on you have to think for the past present and future all together you know in designing a curriculum map it is very important to decide the extent to which the map should reflect the past as well because you cannot just start everything from the very beginning at that particular moment no you have to just take something from the past probably there are some courses that are were not aligned you can utilize those courses there were some course learning outcomes objectives were being made earlier by your senior by your peers that are still usable so don't discard them all just try to be uh, more vigilant in filtering those so not to take anything that is obsolete that's not you think later on align would be aligned would be able uh, would uh, would be easy a uh, easily aligning with the program learning outcomes that could, things could be discarded and replaced by the new ones uh, for the present uh, course and all these things yes you have to work on this in the future curriculum that definitely is your target later on you have to decide uh, on access of the map like once you will have curriculum map that who would get access to uh, the map so there are different stakeholders so different stakeholders have to be given access to different parts that like for instance a student should not have the access to those part those were those are only for the faculty while they are putting their input and where they are refining all these things so that has not to be given uh, that access shouldn't be given for those areas access shouldn't be given to this one so a decision needs to be taken as to who has access to to map in from, from different uh, what do you call this map at different stages in general access uh, to the map should be open to all potential users right within the institution but with some limitations to to, to some stakeholders uh, access to specific sections of some some particular parts of the curriculum map however may need to be restricted so keep in mind so this may include sections where like for instance there is detailed information about the content of the student assessment that has you know not to be provided to the student yet or personal information for instance about any individual student or or what do you call this staff appraisal because staff appraisal uh, are also sometimes part of the curriculum mapping so that that shouldn't have uh, I mean, the student shouldn't have access to those particular sections. Then you have to familiarize staff and students with, with the particular map. And it's very important that the best use is made um, of the map and all appropriate information uh, which is captured correctly for inclusion in the map. To, to this end, to, to, to this stage, it is important to give teaching staff, your administrators and students some ownership of the map. Though once they will get ownership, they will get more inclined towards working and, 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 and providing their contribution. And to provide them with the necessary background information, if you'll give them some necessary background information, that time you have to give them some more ownership. It would let them familiarize uh, with how, how the map can be used, right? And how the map can be improved, how the map can later on be reviewed as well. So later on, <clears throat> Once you have familiarized your staff and student and giving them some uh, ownership, then you have to plan uh, for evaluation and updation, upgradation of the map. It's very important because it's a cyclical process. It has to keep evaluated, keep reviewed all the time. Because there will be changes in the curriculum um, and it is essential because these changes are uh, like inevitable in the curriculum and at different places. At different, you know, you get some new faculty member who is trained enough to teach student and who might have been trained in some particular uh, concepts of teaching or methods of teaching or methods of assessment that in, in at the beginning were not there at your institute. So your institute or you would have to be like, you know, obliged, would be very happy to utilize those expertise of that particular person, that particular faculty. So that time if he wanted to add something that cur particular curriculum in existing curriculum, yes, you have to allow him. So that's why evaluating, continuous evaluating, continuous up upgrade, upgradation and updation is very, very important, essential. And that arrangements should be in place to 
to update the maps whenever is necessary. There is one optional um, point. We can say it's optional, but believe me, now uh, uh, I must say that in even with in, in the developing countries, this is not an optional uh, point uh, for selection of software platform. It has become like you know mandatory now. But still, uh, we sometimes we have in our institution some some restrictions. Some there are not much uh, resources, not much funds being provided. So I would still like to keep it as optional because otherwise, if I say it's mandatory, any student that doesn't have that sufficient funds, so, such uh, sufficient uh, what, what do you call this uh, uh, resources or uh, support, financial support, they might think that there can their student cannot. Uh, map a curriculum so that's why i still am not in the favor of keeping this point as a mandatory one i always say it's an optional point to select a software platform and choosing the most efficient software is, is a good first step actually in curriculum mapping and uh, luckily there is a like you know a dy dynamic market uh, every day there is some some new software coming for curriculum mapping uh, curriculum mapping software is, is far more efficient than the excel sheet believe me or word document and good curriculum mapping software allows you to catalog and store your map for future use as well and uh, uh, what do you call it? It, sh it should be accessible by the curriculum authors administrators and the public as well sometimes because you know from uh, we consider public uh, the, the people the authority that is beyond that is outside our institute as well so keeping those points in mind now here we are trying to appear to make you aware of some very important terminologies which you might come across while uh, 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 while getting engaged or while performing curriculum mapping such terminology sounds it still sounds buzzword but there are to th these all are to be learned by heart uh, they are to be learned well by anyone who is uh, involved and who wants to involve in future in the pursuit of curriculum mapping for instance uh, vertical coherence because there has to be coherence or uh, you know among among all the components uh, of the of a curriculum so what coherence uh, should look like it it could be vertical coherence when a curriculum is vertically aligned or uh, vertically coherent it means that what students learn in one lesson or in in one particular course or grade level it prepares them for the next lesson or course or grade level this is called vertical coherence. In the curriculum mapping uh, has got uh, one important aim to ensure that teaching is purposefully structured, right? It's not like, you know, something random. It has to be logically sequenced across different grade levels so that students are building on what they have previously learned and, and learning the knowledge and skill that will progressively prepare them for more challenging times to come. I mean, in their higher level, higher years. Uh, in the preceding years. Next we see is uh, horizontal coherence. So whenever, just keep in mind, uh, whenever curriculum is horizontally aligned, when if you, you claim your curriculum to be horizontally, horizontally aligned or if you are planning or having intentions your curriculum to be horizontally aligned or horizontally coherent, it means what students are learning in one grade, in one particular subject course, uh, later on in a different grade that would have to go along again that would be like you know adding up their uh, previous knowledge so curriculum ma mapping has this also important aim which ensures that assessments um, and, and other methods uh, the teachings for teachers they all used to evaluate learning achievement and progress uh, is based on what has actually been taught to students and on the learning standard that was gradually improving and the students are expected to meet in a particular course subject area or what is known as a, a grade level later on we have uh, subject area coherence and it's very important for you to understand this so when the curriculum is coherent within a subject area what does it mean simply you can say that um, science or research and topic may be aligned both within and across gr grade level so curriculum mapping for subject area coherence what would it provide it provide it will provide you 
to get ensured that teachers are working towards the same learning standard in similar courses three first year students with some course foundation course and that students are also learning the same amount of content and receiving the same quality of instruction across subject area courses when they reach to the next level as well then we have interdisciplinary coherence that is not much being dealt in uh, traditional or what you call as commonly curriculum mapping strategies being uh, adopted by different uh, institution but still few institution institution they have now start uh, working uh, on it what we call the interdisciplinary education interdisciplinary coherence where when a curriculum is coherent across uh, multiple subject area such as uh, um, medicine research surgery or in, within one 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 subject area of the medicine if it's pulmonology or whatever it may be aligned both within the cross grade levels also so curriculum mapping for interdisciplinary coherence again would let you focus on the skills and uh, and work habit and values that to need to succeed in, in their academic courses or discipline after finishing their their course so uh i think now we have few slides more remaining for you before we get to the point where we will be having a discussion about your uh, pre test uh, things so we can say that uh, uh yes so this is important slide but it's, it's a repeated slide but let me go before passing it on that uh, at, at the level at any, every level i either you are at, at the starting point before starting point or you are before during and after development of curriculum kisi bhi aap stage pe hai so this is responsibility for all state stakeholders to keep reminded and to to keep asking themselves three questions we very important ye four questions jo hai ye apne aap se aap self jo hai na wo ask questioning karte hain ki what what are we teaching and intend to assess aur ye asal mein ek question hai jo administration ko puch rahe hain right or teachers ko what are we teaching and intend to assess uh, when we are teaching when we are teaching in uh, it and and when shall be the assessment usko bhi time frame hona chahiye who is teaching it and who is responsible for assessment very important and how are we teaching and assessing it so these questions are to be asked by the uh, administrators or the uh, when i say administrator it, it it means the course administrator actually um, right or the faculty involved in teaching and assessment so there comes the question similarly there are set of questions for students which are to be answered very honestly that what am i learning at the moment and what am i learning or expected to learn it i mean when i am uh, when i am to i am expected to get my hands uh, on this particular skill or particular knowledge uh, in in a, in a fashion in a way that uh, i would be considered uh, not only the novice but but at least on the mid level of my expertise on who is teaching it i should know as a student and who is being taught how how it is being taught and how will be i how i will be assess what would be the marking system what would be the assessment tools utilized for that particular piece of knowledge that i have gained in my yesterday's lecture or my today's uh, lecture or today's small group uh, activity and show competency that i have learned it how is my performance and where do i need uh, improvement so again so you have to know that what actually is your purpose of getting engaged with the curriculum mapping i mean if you want to start uh, mapping your curriculum you have to know that what is your uh, actual purpose there could be uh, very few or uh, there could be a long list there could be a, as many purposes as you select at your institution where it all depends on your institution's vision and mission as well for example someone can have a purpose as simple as um, looking for an opportunity for educators to review the curriculum to check for unnecessary redundancies only or for checking for um, inconsistencies or checking for uh, misalignments or checking for weak weaknesses or gaps only this could be also over purpose but the more 
explicit your purpose is the more practical your purpose is uh, uh, there are more chances that you will have a, a better curriculum mapping other reasons may include for instance but not limited to for for instance like uh, you want to document the relationship between the required components of the curriculum the, how they are aligning and what is the relationship i mean if some some student is has gone through foundation course now later on he has to go for the advanced as well it should not the other way around and uh, the intent and student learning outcomes also has to be in a way that at their particular level in first year uh, they can simply achieve it uh, they can demonstrate their proficiency in those particular learning outcomes that are being set for him or you wish to help uh, identify opportunities uh, while looking uh, while looking at your while making your curriculum map so this could be also one of your purpose of starting to work for your curriculum mapping uh, i will repeat it again that help identify opportunities for integration among disciplines because this this is talking about this point talking about the alignment as well or perhaps you want to provide a uh, uh, review of assessment method and someone may also like to identify what students have learned actually right it's also important that what student has learned at that particular point otherwise it, it will go all into vain so this also allows this also allows educators to focus on building on uh, previous knowledge of their learners so basically while you are at the um, while you're starting your curriculum mapping process purpose has to be very clear purpose have to be very purposes are to be very explicit but at the same time don't uh, go for the complex purposes right whatever purpose you have you you should think that keep i mean you should you have to keep in mind the available sources you have to keep in mind the available um, opportunities for you to work for the timeline you know and and the staff with you is it is is the staff ready for for just you know putting their contributions uh, and extend and, and are they happy are they intention having intentions are they voluntarily voluntarily is, uh, you know ready to work no it's not something that you can impose on them like right? they have to volunteer all their contributions so they have to extend the helping hands on on their own personal will so that that would help you get your purpose filled right so that's why it's very important to have clear explicit simple but a specific purpose it has to be detailed it has to be explicit it has to be as many as you want because it depends again on your skills on your team's abilities on your resources as well as it also depends on the uh, length of uh, objectives and aims list of uh, uh, objectives and aims of which which have been you know put in place by the the hierarchy in at your institution so at this stage uh now the now a question may arise that how shall i start mapping the curriculum or uh, what shall i get jo bhi start karega to definitely i mean these questions have to you know arise in the mind that so on one part we can call it a framework on the other hand we have outcome So every framework has to get some to 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 a level where we should shall get some outcome out of it, right? So answer your question number one. You have to have aims, a list of uh, teaching sessions, and a valid and reliable assessment strategy. If you have all these things, you can start working on your curriculum map. So this is your framework. Once you have got your framework in your hand, you can really start. On the other hand, to answer your question number two. Um, as we have seen from the from the literature, it is suggested that you will get evidence-based curriculum, number one, and and you will get a great opportunity for having an insight, detailed insight into actual learner activities. कि हो क्या रहा है हमारे स्टूडेंट के साथ वो कौन से लेवल है उनकी एक्टिविटीज किस तरह से जो है ना वो कॉन्टेक्स्ट जो है मेडिकल का मेडिसिन का या सर्जरी का या व्हाट एवर सब्जेक्ट यू आर डीलिंग विथ उसमें वो fulfill karne properly uski square nahi on to need heavy and at that particular level in the most importantly uh, you will be able to get all stakeholders on board 
is very important you know, getting uh, stakeholders on board so don't get uh, confused with the uh, aims and objectives sometimes they are being used like you know, interchangeably but in broader manner we, we see that aims are actually general statements uh, which you make concerning your overall goals uh, or, or intentions or of teaching on the other hand objectives are the individual stages uh, that learner must achieve on the way in in order to reach to these goals so aims or uh, objectives may process light uh, thin line of difference does exist and these words are sometimes synonymous but they they, they, uh, they do have slightly different meanings so and we can also say the goals um, and aims are inter interchangeably used and it's fine and they are actually abstract ideas uh, and uh, we can say the aim is what you hope to get uh, or what you want to do right but it but it may take a, a long period of time while whereas target and objectives the exact results of what you want to get so th th these targets and objectives are something that tell you exactly the results of what you want to get in in a nutshell your framework and the outcome that is shown in this uh, uh, particular slide here it would help you it will enable you for uh, uh, i can say like 100% uh, of posting of the curriculum agar aapke paas ye hai aims objectives hai aapka teaching bhi the aapka assessment bhi thi ab aapne evidence based curriculum mil gaya aapko insight bhi ho gayi learning activities ki aap aap uh, kamyab ho gaye to take to get the people on board or on board with you so this this particular this particular moment you are sure that you are able to post your curriculum 100% because you have got all material in hand unless you get all material in your hand you will not be able to just you know make it accessible to any other party any other stakeholder and at the same time accurately tagging of each learning activity would be achieved kyunki aap to sare hi learning activities mein insight mil gayi hai so you accurately you can tag each learning activity and and ability to report to the stakeholders you are now you know getting to a level where you feel that you have ability to report your curriculum to all all the stakeholders and th this is uh, this is a really a milestone that you can say that you or, or the a benchmark uh, later on could be done at this stage also so again continuation with the previous slide we can see that, that if you call it the big picture big picture looks like what course all subject objectives are with you you have got uh, like any teaching uh, session any teaching activity at your college or at least in your particular course has got objectives and it these objectives work well with you at the time of your assessment as well because you know if if any of us goes uh, to have a lecture to have a session with any class at any level and at any year for any course if you are we are not having objective as a first slide of our lecture our presentation later on when you will make questions out of that particular content that you have taught in that particular time later on student might have some objection and if they are not so empowered at least they'll feel in their in their self that the, the particular slides doesn't uh, show any uh, anything that that later on came up in the exam they might object but if you have objective with you later on you can reply to them you can respond to them that these slides that that i've shown were not the the content to be examined they have got a objective slides the first slide was of objective slide so these objective work between you and between your student as, as a bridge as a contact so later on they will know that they have to achieve these objectives the slides particularly are like you know for your own remembrance in the lecture it's not for a student to to just you know get a uh, get them um, uh, what do you call this memorize by heart and later on they see in exam is little different the wording is different terminology is different so basically the objective if you have in your presentation if your colleagues your team has in presentation in your lecture in any activity teaching educational activity this serves well lectures and it works for lectures for tbl problem based learning every, every, every elsewhere as well and how do objectives content assessment fit together so in big picture you can see that how your your objectives with the contents align with assessment align with with, with the competencies 
and so on. That's why we, we call them a big picture of uh, curriculum mapping. And uh, just to remind you again that after a few slides, we are going to have uh, our discussion with you people, with you guys, on the pre-test uh, segment. And uh, hopefully, these all slides, at least few of them, has something very, uh, what do you call this, or something very pertinent to those particular questions that have been raised in, in the earlier slide for your pre-test question. Actually, these all have got somehow some link, but a few slides really were um, directly addressing the question that had been posed in uh, for you as the pre-test uh, pre uh, quiz actually. So, once curriculum is in hand, the process has been done, now you, what you have to do, you have to implement it. So, implementing will will address implement process will address three critical questions that who is doing what i told you that that there, you might feel that there's some same question same components being repeated and, and this is because at every level we are reviewing at every level we are trying to get alignment at every level we are ad addressing the competencies and so on so we have to see that who is doing what we will be able to know and we will be able to know how does the work align with the teacher uh, to implement curriculum effectively i must say if 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 you want to implement a curriculum effectively staff must understand how to use it uh, use this curriculum map responsibly and intentionally with their own positive intention right so programs must develop a system of training and professional development uh, and that would support education staff in their efforts who are inclined to contribute and support to staff is very essential actually because it number one develops education staff knowledge it develops education staff or faculty skills for the implementing of the curriculum it would help to focus on developmentally appropriate and sufficiently rich content and the skills that uh, would definitely con contribute to the learners development later on across the developmental domains and last but not least focus like on the content, the focus would be on the content and skill that would support learners' development in a specific domain. And uh, it will help you to monitor curriculum implementation and fidelity by collecting and using data that you have in your hand as a part of a continuous improvement process that, that can be termed as, as, a, as a review process, actually. So now coming back to our work here. Um, like, you know, if we, we, we take as a, as an institute, as a, as a, what do you call this main stakeholder uh, on, on the other hand, institu institution, when you say institution, it, it carries, uh, the faculty, the administrators, all, all these main players there on the other part, we see learners, right? So we are having now, now two, um, uh, and two extreme ends. So basically alignment, Joe here. वो जितनी भी इन चीजों में हमने की उसमें एजुकेशनल मटेरियल था उसमें आपके एम्स ऑब्जेक्टिव आपके इंस्टीट्यूट के प्रोग्राम्स के आपके नेशनल लेवल के एम्स ऑब्जेक्टिव प्रोग्राम रनिंग आउटकम से आपके ادارے के इंस्टीट्यूट के देन यू हैड गॉट यू नो कमिंग डाउन टू द लेवल ऑफ कोर्स देन यू आर कमिंग डाउन टू द टू द लेवल ऑफ योर एजुकेशनल एक्टिविटी दिस ऑल इज एनकम्पास इन इन सर्कल इन इंस्टीट्यूशन स्टेक होल्डर द अदर स्टेक होल्डर वी हैव ऑन द राइट हैंड इज द लर्नर so what institution requirements they, they may include but i would again say are not not limited to trained faculty requirement ki baat ho rahi hai hai? trained faculty requirement for curriculum mapping work trained faculty resources to implement teaching and assessment tools you have your tools but is uh, is the faculty is ready are the resources like in in, in good shape to be implement implemented while dealing with the teaching assessment tools yes or no this is very important then we are coming on the learner side so learner ability we shall at this stage now now be assured what professional competence for example uh, you you must have heard this word like, like you know maybe few of you interestable professional activity so now kisi ne bhai epas epas bahut aajkal mashhoor hai what do they do they had a competency based curriculum so interestable professional activity are tasks uh, or responsibility or whenever any curriculum at any institution is competence based there are these interestable professional activities 
to be dealt with so what are they actually so uh, professional activities entrustable professional activities or in, in the in the short form we say epas these are tasks or responsibilities responsibilities that faculty entrust for any of their trainee to execute unsupervised once he or she i mean the trainee the learner has obtained adequate competence and these are execu- executable within a given time frame these are observable these are measurable and these are again suitable for focus interest interest uh, decisions making so we can say these are units of works these could be pertaining to the knowledge this could be pertaining to the professional attitude this could be pertaining to the communication skills for example if somebody is uh, dealing with anesthesia course so anesthetic care of an patient who is not having any complication so like any uncomplicated patient having anesthetic care could be dealt well by uh, any competent uh, trainee while he or she is not supervised so by the way we, we all know that uh, competency remains theoretical if not grounded in practice so hum usko theoretical part pe rakhenge to wo apni height pe nahi aayenge jab tak hum unko practice mein judge nahi karte and that's why they are, they, these are very important so knowing it that that what are your needs at, as an institution or at your institution or what are your needs what are your learners need or you if you are learners what are you need, your you as a learner need while um, uh, being involved in uh, curriculum mapping was well, that in the previous slide now we can see here that you have to have a very common language so terminology has to be you know agreed upon across across the institute across the team which is who is working in in your curriculum mapping work uh, for instance we can say uh, phrases hote hain ke year of curriculum hai kaun sa hai usme aapke aapke blocks hain aapke jo teaching blocks hain teaching strategies hain teaching session activities hain sequence blocks hain aapke isme course unit block hote hain clerkship program mein wo count hote hain wo sequence block kehte hain then we have events no for for assessment or for educational instruction events and that are the actual assessment or instruction sessions and they has to have title as we already discussed the objectives every teaching or instruction or assessment session have to have objectives titles duration uh, a specific duration description keywords expectations these would be for faculty as well as for the students instruction or assessment method and the resources also and last but not least expectations in terms of your competency and level of objectives that are to be achieved that would be marked again as as a milestone and for example we call them epa and we we just have heard about what was the what was epa so now now if you want to you know really come into play then you have to start homogenizing or standardizing which is the first task for homogenizing for standardization what you have to standardize what you have to homogenize you have to homogenize vocabulary similar vocabulary has to be used from the beginning to end even your team member if you are leading a team your team member should be aware of the vocabulary you are going to use in written format or verbal format so it could not be like you are calling a course as a block and he is calling as a course as as a, as a sequential segment because later on you have to add it up in your documentation in in a similar way so i would take just only one minute break somebody is on the door only one minute please now we are zooming i'm sorry for the inconvenience so once you have started working towards your goal you have to homogenize vocabulary as we have just discussed grouping classification which level which stage classification and sub classification stages of the uh, different uh, uh, course area that you have already um, already discussed and get agreed on and uh later on you have to have uh, a interface of the design so what would it it look like it it would have to uh, have input and output uh, like you know if you are having like on on paper you can start working on the papers but for the output 
again electronic online <coughs> resources for instance your excel sheets for your for your forms and all these things even with the paper if you're working as, as a, uh, for for your manual uh, type of work you, you have to use it then you will be able to export like this is the something that that's provided to the learners and it's very important and last but not least starting with the vocabulary and ending would be the map then you would be able to illustrate and visualize uh, which could be or but not limited to form of tables so after knowing after dealing with all these uh, slides at least now we should know that why is it so important to have a curriculum map what is its significant what is it significant why, why is it significant for so we all uh, might agree that curriculum mapping actually it, it not only it improves course alignment because we have been working towards alignment and we were talking discussing a lot about alignment between course learning objectives or course learning outcomes with program learning outcomes with national level competencies all these things but at the same time i must say it not only improves your course alignment and articulation but also it promotes a, a a supportive collaborative culture actually right which is actually required at every institution because it really enhances the learning of all stakeholders it, it, it enhances the achievement of all learning stakeholders because once you you will have a supportive collaborative culture at your institute that would you know run long way for for the betterment of the of your in, individual betterment as well as the betterment of your institute of your program as well and and the credibility would be heightened as well of your institute and once the credibility of your institute is heightened it really is like a you know uh, effect that that reaches to you as well as an individual so there are again like every other uh, effort every other education endeavor there are potential challenges um, that that you you might think or you might not uh, you know even uh, gauge but they might come to your way uh, that could be like you know lack of resources lack of leadership vision from the from the administration um, defining smart competencies and performance standards for each discipline uh, are are very challenging uh, undoubtedly and the training of faculty uh, if they are not ready to get trained or if you are not having ample time or if you are not having um, what do you call this uh, a free uh, uh, what do you call this? Uh, I, I mean, you know, if you're not giving um, uh, what do you call this? space, if you're not giving like academic space uh, from your administration, so probably even if you are uh, uh, intent, you are you are uh, intending to to train your faculty, but you are not being supported by the administrator, faculty development program would would not uh, go long way, and that is actually required for writing learning objectives and writing quality exam questions as well. So again, data entry uh, is indeed very, very time consuming. And we can say the updating of the map that's very much important uh, at the time of reviewing of the update, reviewing of the map, it has to be updated and updating of the map helps you keep the system current. And it also ensures that the system changes as the curriculum evolves. So do you think, would you guys like to add anything more and how, uh, how, how, or what any 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 further challenge could come into your way when you are uh, you know uh, trying to work towards mapping your curriculum. Anything else that that you think is not in this list could be a potential challenge. Anyone? You can mute yourself and un unmute yourself and speak up. You think there could be some more potential challenges if you are already involved. In teaching and learning process so probably you can you can get to that point is there anyone who can tell that is there anything else that is not in this list as a potential challenge for curriculum mapping or even for any educational uh, endeavor if you are trying to bring up at your institute no one do you think this this list is explicit, right? How how about resistance from the peer or from senior colleagues? Have uh, 
Have you ever experienced it? Have any one of you ever experienced any peer resistance or resistance from seniors while you are trying to update anything, while you are trying to modify anything? No one so far? Have, have you ever been involved in, in teaching and learning activities so far? At your departments, at your institutes? I, I could not yes sir hear. yes I just want to I don't want to know the details but I just want to uh, listen yes or no so had there been any resistance to your any endeavors that you had you wanted to to bring up to change the system while you're dealing with teaching and learning so yes there was right okay it's but natural why, why I, I try to just bring that point up uh, would be dealt in the next slide actually so don't worry if you you we have all these uh, you know challenges or few of these challenges we have like you know they're, they're very popular and famous set of steps actually uh, by Cotter and and he has just given us in 2007 a list of seven steps that uh, are shown here and they are really proven, uh, they, they have shown proven results and efficacy in challenging times. So do try these all whenever or do try some of these whenever and uh, wherever required. It, even if you are in the, you know, realm of uh, make, bringing it up, uh, curriculum change, curriculum reform, curriculum development, curriculum mapping, whatever. Or, or even while you are trying to, you know, uh, suggest something new for your teaching educational endeavors and what does it say it says that you have to establish a sense of urgency that you have to give this impression to your colleagues to see that, that there is something very much urgently required and uh, if you have you know guiding coalition that that again serves well and uh, you have to create a vision to tell the details about that particular thing and then you have to communicate the vision and uh, uh, if you want to take others contribution you have to empower others also to act on the vision plan very important for you to plan and create short-term wins otherwise you, you start with something that is like you know, long-term winning goals that might give impression that is something very complicated and later on consolidating improvements and produce more changes every time you, you keep moving on you have to just keep more changes and institutionalize new approach whichever thing you have learned you have just you know get your hands on try to just uh, make it happen in your uh, institution that is uh, so important so this is the summary point i want you guys to read this summary point 